National Arches of the Philippines was created through Presidential Proclamation Number no. 101 Series of 1972 to give recognition and respect to the citizens who have given outstanding contribution to Philippine arts. First, the artist must be a Filipino citizen. An artist who has passed on can still be nominated as long as he was a Filipino before death. Second, the artist should have contributed in building a Filipino sense of nationhood as seen in their works. Third, the artist should have led the way in a new and creative expression or style, separating themselves from others and in turn influencing other generations of artists. Fourth, the artist's work should be noteworthy and embodiment of excellence, further enriching his chosen field of creative expression. Fifth, the artist should be critically acclaimed and accepted by legitimate institutions and peers. Born at the turn of the century, on the 25th day of January 1901 in Binondo, Manila, National Artist for Architecture Pablo Severo Antonio pioneered modern Philippine architecture. Pablo S. Antonio was named National Artist for Architecture on March 27, 1976. He was dubbed the President Architect after he was commissioned to remodel the houses of President Manuel Alcazin and Vice President Sergio Osmeño. He died on January 14, 1975 due to a gunshot wound. His basic design is grounded in simplicity, no clutter. The lines are clean and smooth, and where there are curves, these are made integral to the structure. Pablo Jr. points out, for our father, every line must have a meaning, a purpose. For him, function comes first before elegance or form. The other thing that characterizes an Antonio structure is the maximum use of natural light and cross ventilation. Antonia believes that buildings should be planned with austerity in mind, and its stability forever is the aim of true architecture, that buildings must be progressive, simple in design, but dignified, true to a purpose without resorting to an applied set of aesthetics, and should eternally recreate truly. In 1933, he designed the ideal theater in Avenida Rizal Avenue, which is one of his major works that made him prominent in architecture. The ideal projected an Art Deco style of architecture. This type of architectural style was prevalent in the 1930s, wherein cinemas and theaters were designed using this style. One of its interesting features is that it boosted a streamlined design. That is, it was adorned with smooth curves and finishes. After its completion in the said year, the ideal became one of the city's best theaters. The founder of Far Eastern University, Nicanor Reyes, deal with him to make several buildings in the campus. The FBU campus is considered its largest ensemble of surviving Art Deco architecture in Manila. And in 2005, it received an honorable mention citation from the UNESCO for the body's 2005 Asia Pacific Heritage Award for Culture Heritage Conservation. Antonio's other major projects include Manila Polo Club in 1950, Guzman College of Science and Technology, and White Cross Sanitarium in 1938. Popularly known as the father of Philippine architecture, Juan Apil is the very first national artist for architecture. He was born on May 26, 1899 in Capo, Manila and died on the 7th day of May 1986. He was named a national artist in 1973. He is a graduate of Harvard University, an architect, civil engineer, a teacher, and civic leader. He is also a pioneer and innovator in Philippine architecture. In essence, Nakfil's greatest contribution is his belief that there is such a thing as Philippine architecture, espousing architecture reflective of Philippine traditions and culture. It is also largely due to his zealous representation and efforts that private Filipino architects and engineers, by law, 
are not able to participate in the design and execution of government projects. He has integrated strength, function, and beauty in the buildings of their country's heritage today. Knockville founded the Philippine Architect Society in 1933. It is now called the Philippine Institute of Architects. The University of the Philippines Suleiman Administration Building More popularly known to UP students as Gasm Hall, this 1950s building hosts the Board of Regents of the University. It is a beautiful example of Nakfield's post-war architecture and serves as a gateway and along with the famous oblation sculpture as a grand entrance to all those who enter the university. Reconstruction of Rizal Shrine He stands as the supervising architect of the renovation of Rizal Shrine in 1949. Staying true to the original home, the reconstructed house occupies the same site and is built from the materials during the time the house was built. Other major works of him are the Old Humanities Building of the University of the Philippines Los Banos and the Manila Jockey Club. Leandro Viloxin was born on August 15, 1928 and died on the 15th day of November 1994 due to stroke. It was on the year 1990 when he was named as a national artist. He is a UST and a Jello Soul graduate, and he reshaped the urban landscape with a distinctive architecture reflective of Philippine art and culture. He believes that the true Philippine architecture is a product of two great streams of culture, the Oriental and Occidental, to produce a new object of profound harmony. It is this synthesis that underlies all his works, with his achievements in concrete reflecting his mastery of space and scale. Erviloxin's building is an original and identifiable as Luxin with themes of floating volume, the duality of light and happy point and massive running in his major works. From 1955 to 1994, Luxin has produced 75 residences and 88 buildings, including 11 churches and chapels, 23 public buildings, 48 commercial buildings, 6 major hotels and an airport terminal building. His major works include Cultural Center of the Philippines, Philippine International Convention Center, Sapil Philippine Plaza, and Istana Neural Iman. National Artist for Architecture, who was popularly known simply as I.P. Santos, was also known for being the father of Philippine landscape architecture. He was recognized as a National Artist of the Philippines in the field in 2006. He was born in September 2019 in Malbonio, Rizal and had passed away at the age of 84 in January 29, 2014 due to multiple organ failure. He pioneered landscape architecture in the Philippines and spent a lifetime seeking to integrate structure and surroundings in one organic interaction between aesthetic and geography. Santos helped establish the first university programs in landscape architecture and advocated for the recognition of the art and profession by government and allied fields. He also organized the Philippine Association of Landscape Architects. He had a distinguished career that spanned more than 40 years and was responsible for the creation of hundreds of parks, plazas, gardens, and outdoor sites that have become a part of modern day of Philippine life. At Rizal Park in Manila, Santos did to Artist Village, the Garden for the Blind, and the setup of the tablet execution of Dr. Jose Rizal. He was then conferred the Patmubay Ning Sining at Kalinangan Award by the city of Manila in 1972. He was behind the landscaping of key architectural work such as the San Miguel Corporation building. The Tagaytay Highlands is considered the best showcase of IP Santos' tropical landscape style. His design input this development, which may be found in the country's clubhouse area in the buildings. The public's general perception of the landscape architectural design at Tagaytay Highlands, especially in the area of the country's clubhouse, is that the design was by foreign landscape consultants.
It was in the year 1931 when Manyoza was born in Manila and was 88 years of age when he died in February 20, 2019, reportedly due to a lingering illness. Considered as the father of Philippine neo-vernacular architecture, Bobby Manyoza was known for some of today's iconic landmarks and immortalizing Bahai Kubo inspired architectural style and aesthetics in modern architecture. For more than 60 years of his career, he championed Filipino architecture as seen in most of his works. Until his retirement in 2015, he had passionately created original Filipino forms and spaces with intricate and refined details anchored on Filipino sensibilities and cultures. After receiving a unified nomination for National Arches in 2016, his contribution to the development of Philippine architecture led to his recognition as a National Artist of the Philippines for Architecture in 2018 by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Coconut Palace His designs firm as a whole championed the use of indigenous materials such as bamboo, coconut, rattan, cogon, shell, adobe, and even ash from the Pinatubo volcanic eruption. The Coconut Palace, literally an entire palace made out of coconut wood and trees by products in the former office of the Vice President located at the cultural center of the Philippines complex in Manila, is one of his most popular examples of his extensive use of local material. Aman Polo Resort Architect Bobby also designed the breathtaking and world-famous Aman Polo Resort in Palawan, which was fashioned as a deconstructed kubo. He employed sustainability features in the design of the resort such as a renewable energy, natural light, and indigenous materials, earning him three international awards. The Asia-Pacific Interior Design Award for Hotel or Resort Category in 1994 and the prestigious Calibantis Award for Best Beach Resort Worldwide in 1994 and 1995. Ramon Valera was born on August 31, 1912 in Abra. He is the Philippines' first national artist for fashion design. He finished his primary and secondary education in La Salle but dropped out his first year in college at FEU due to financial problems. Valera never had any formal training in fashion design, but his works have been the standard of fashion students for intricate sewing, embroidery, and handiwork. He transformed the Parot Saya into a one-piece, removed the panela from it, and renewed fashion for women in his time. It is said that Abra born designer has always crafted the butterfly sleeves that the Turno is characterized by today. In many ways, Valera projected his patriotism. He, like many other Filipinos of his time, was proud of his homeland. He refused to work outside of the country and rejected the great Cristobal Valenciaga who offered him a partnership at his atelier. A standout piece in the displays designed by Valera shows the embellished sleeves created with obviously masterful beadwork extended into a gorgeous 12-foot train, the work of a true master of a design, says Rajo. Valera's work made way for a rebirth of butterfly sleeves, which he provided with a firm structure which are familiar with today. She flexing on the ground, but her booty flat. His creations clothed the members of Philippine society with a new ceremonial garment to lead them into the fresh start they sought. This is the turno he designed for Luz Magsaysay, which consisted of Swiss embroidered fabric. The embroidery was dotted with tiny seeds pearls of light flamarine color. This is the society figure, Elvera Manahan, dressed in a Valero gown. Sketches of tall, 
slender figures assented with sharp shoulders and barely visible hips were drawn donning simplistic garments. This is a Fusha Alaskin Muslim-inspired gown heat design for Delsa Vilonko Lezzetin. At the tips of each cascading V are two tambourine medal. Jose Maria V. Zaragoza was born on December 6, 1912 in Manila and died at the age of 81 in the year 1994. His talent for architectural design can be seen in his religious and secular building designs. His liturgical structure reflects a modern take on church design while his secular building shows sensitivity to their environment and functionality in design. His style, while modern, shows influences of colonial architecture as well as international style prevailing trend at the time. His style, while modern, shows influences of colonial architecture as well as the international style of prevailing trend at the time. This style can be seen in his impressive body of secular works that include 36 office buildings, 4 hotels, 2 hospitals, 5 housing projects, and over 270 residences. His expertise and his claim to fame were his ecclesiastical designs which are backed by his studies at different institutions here and abroad, such as UST, International Institute of Liturgical Art in Rome, and Holbersom Technical Research Center in Netherlands. With such credentials, he was entrusted to design 45 different religious structures and institutions all over the country. Jose Maria V. Zaragoza was posthumously conferred the title of National Artist for Architecture in 2014.